Hello everyone, this is Atharva Ratan Babu, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Environmental Engineering and I am going to deal with the course Computational Aerodynamics and in today's topic we will be seeing the explicit and implicit schemes. So what is the major difference between the explicit and implicit scheme and uh, at what point of time we will be using the explicit scheme and at what point of time we will be using the implicit scheme we will learn and moreover we need to see which type of uh, numerical scheme is stable and uh, which type of numerical scheme is conditionally stable, unconditionally stable. So we need to evaluate uh, these factors and use for the fluid flow problem. So, so let's uh, see uh, what is explicit and what is implicit scheme. So here uh, let's see uh, 1D diffusion equation. So dou u by dou t uh, minus alpha dou square u by dou x square is equal to 0. So basically this equation is an uh, 1D unsteady uh, diffu 1D unsteady diffusion equation. So we have to discretize these terms using explicit and implicit techniques. So let's see what is explicit and what is implicit. So if we uh, take the grid points, so basically these are uh, one dimensional. So, so we have already seen that x notation will have i, y notation will have j and uh, z notation will have k indexes. So basically i, j, k, so these are the subscripts, so which are used in the discretization schemes. So for the time, we will be using the super uh, scripts, which is index n. Okay, so since we are dealing with the one dimensional, so we will have the x coordinate and only i a term will be involved. So i subscript. So basically j, k, so these are uh, other dimensions which is y and z. So there are no y term and z term. So therefore, no need to use the j and k components. Okay, so let's see. So how we will uh, discretize uh, these things, okay? So if we see the one dimensional uh, grid point, so let's say this is uh, the line. So here you can see, let's say this is one grid point, other grid point. So this is a grid point, let's say at uh, level n equal to zero, so at initial time, let's say. So here, if we consider, so this has point i, so grid point uh, deno uh, notation i, so the right side it will be i plus 1, so one more it will be i plus 2. So here in the left side you have i minus 1, so here you have i minus 2. So basically you have i, i plus 1, i plus 2, i, i minus 1, i minus 2. So on the left hand side, so you have the decreasing, on the right hand side you have the increasing. Thing. So now uh, what we do is like when we write this equation at a particular point. So let's say we are writing at a particular point which is i at the, at the grid point. So we need to calculate the values at the at the grid point at different different uh, time steps. So uh, let's uh, discretize these things. So u power n plus 1 i minus u power n i divided by delta t minus alpha. So basically since this is a second order derivative, so the formulation we already know. So which is u power i plus 1 to the power of n minus 2 u of i to the power of n. So plus u of i minus 1 to the power of n divided by delta x square equal to 0. So these are the things which we have now. So now this expression whatever you are seeing is called the explicit term. Okay. So why it is called explicit we will show. So let us say this is the uh, n is equal to 0 which is nothing but initial time level. So let us say n is equal to 1 at the other time level. So so this point would be i, so which is of n plus 1 level. 
So what we have here, so in this expression, so what are the terms we have? So we have u of i to the power of n plus 1. So this term is u of i to the power of n plus 1. Okay. So u of i to the power of n. So this term is u of i to the power of n. So next u of i plus 1 to the power of n. So we have this term as u of i plus 1 to the power of n. Then after you have i. So this is what we have and i minus 1 to the power of n. So this term, so which you have u of i minus 1 to the power of n. So here you can see, so n is equal to 0 is nothing but uh, initial time level where we have all the values which are known values with the initial conditions. When we supply the initial conditions, so at each and every grid point, we will be knowing what is, what is the initial value of uh, the velocity component at each and every point. So based on the boundary condition, it starts evaluating uh, the formulation. So now here you can see that so at n is equal to 0, all the values. So what is this? So this one, this term u of i to the u of i plus 1 to the power of n is a known term and uh, u of i to the power of 1 is also a known term and u of i minus 1 to the power of n this is also a known term. So we know all these three values are known values and here also we have u of i to the power of n which is also a known term. Okay. So the unknown term which is remaining is so u of i to the power of n plus 1. So this is the unknown term which we have for the expression. So basically in the explicit method, so there will be only one unknown term which involves. Okay. So if we rearrange this equation, what do we have? So u of i to the power of n plus 1 minus u of, sorry is equal to u of i So basically, this is u of i to the power of n plus alpha into delta t by delta x square. Okay, so this is one term into so u of i plus 1 to the power of n minus 2 u of i to the power of n plus u of i minus 1 to the power of n. Okay, so this is the equation for the velocity at ith grid point of n plus 1 time level. So we know basically, so it is like this. So these are the terms which are involved here. Okay, so these are the terms which are involved here. So basically, from uh, this expression you can see that so there is only one unknown value remaining three are known values so it is very easy to uh, calculate what is the value of u of i to the power of n plus 1 okay so this is basically a one dimensional diffusion equation so if you see two dimensional so let's see what happens. so for the two dimensional accept so here you have one more term which is dou square u by dou y square let's say equal to 0. So for the two dimensional accept like uh, aspect you have uh, additional y term okay. So then what do we have so basically you will have grid points with the uh, i and j coordinate. So basically this is two dimensional. So here you have i comma j so here you have i plus 1 comma j so here you have i minus 1 comma j and bottom you have i comma j minus 1 on the top you have i comma j plus 1 okay so i comma j so why because so here you can see so if it is 1d you have the subscript as i if it is 2d you have the subscript as i and j so therefore, we need to use uh, both the subscript, which is i comma j for a given uh, coordinate. Okay. So let's uh, discretize the uh, above equation. 
so what happens so basically when we write the same thing but we will use both i and j terminology here what we have so u of i comma j to the power of n plus 1 so initially we have u of i why because it is 1d now since it is 2d so we need to use both i comma j index minus so u of i comma j to the power of n divided by delta t okay so minus alpha into so what do we have here so u of i comma sorry i plus 1 comma j to the power of n minus 2 u of i comma j to the power of n next plus u of i minus 1 comma j to the power of n so basically this is for the x coordinate next for the y coordinate what we have next minus alpha into so u of i comma j plus 1 to the power of n sorry here you have divided by delta x square so minus u of i comma j to the power of n plus u of i comma j minus 1 to the power of n divided by delta y square which is of y coordinate so basically what we have so this dou u by dou t expression so you can see it is written in this way so which is forward in time and here dou square u by dou x is a term so here what we have so the observe this uh, term clear so what we have here is for the subscripts so all the j terms are constant so the meaning here is so dou square u by dou x square so is a second order derivative so where the x parameters are varying so therefore we need to vary the index i and keep the j index as constant so if you observe three uh, values so which is of u of i plus 1 comma j to the power of n so here you can see y j and here also you can see i comma j which is uh, only j term and here you can see i minus 1 comma j so if you observe the three uh, terms so basically uh, three values so j, j is constant it is not varying only i is varying so which is i plus 1 i and i minus 1 okay so this is for dou square u by dou x square so when you take dou square u by dou y square so here you can see dou square u by dou y square what happens so you have i comma j plus 1 so you have j plus 1 and j and j minus 1 so basically here the j terms are varying okay and uh, i terms are constant so you can see i i i it's a constant so in these things so you can see that so basically this is a plane so which is of n is equal to zero level so where we know all the values so for the two dimensional so for the second plane which is n is equal to one plane so this would be unknown value which depends on these phi parameters so what are so you can see the phi terms so how many terms are there so u of i so what are the terms here here we'll write it so u of i plus 1 comma j to the power of n and u of i comma j to the power of n and u of i minus 1 comma j to the power of n and u of i comma j minus 1 to the power of n and we have one more which is u of i comma j plus 1 to the power of n so we have 1 2 3 4 5 so totally so the value u of i comma j to the power of n plus 1 is depending upon the five parameters okay so these values which are the five parameters which is written here are the known values okay for a two dimensional so when you go for the three dimensional so you will have the extra terms so you have i comma j comma k okay so this is so basically if we see so if we add dou square u by dou z square then what happens so basically this is unsteady 
three dimensional diffusion equation actually so here you are seeing i plus 1 comma j so i comma j and i minus 1 comma j so when we write the discretized equation for this equation so we will have i plus 1 comma j comma k so here also i comma j comma k i minus 1 comma j comma k so for additionally we will have k terms here okay 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 so then additional we have to write the equation same equation in terms of k okay so this is what we have so whatever the equation we have whether it is a one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional so we have only one unknown value for the explicit scheme okay now for the now let's see for implicit scheme so for the implicit scheme so here we have only one known value so the equation terminology whatever we have written was the same but uh, here uh, you can see that there will be only one known value so let's write the equation again which is q of i comma so since if we are writing for 1d there is only u of i so u of i u of i plus 1 u of i minus 1 u of i minus 2 u of i plus 2 okay so these are the things which we have so basically u of i this is at n is equal to 0 level similarly if we write one more line so let's say n is equal to n plus 1 level okay let's say we will get Okay. So you of i, you of i plus one, you of i plus two. So basically, what we have, so we have same points, but they are at other time level. So here, uh, let's see the equation. for the uh, discretized equation with the implicit scheme so u of i to the power of n plus 1 minus u of i to the power of n divided by delta t which will be e, which is minus u of i plus 1 to the power of n plus 1 minus 2 u of i to the power of n plus 1 plus u of i minus 1 to the power of n plus 1 divided by delta x square is equal to 0 so observe this expression so what we have here so here there is only one known value what is it this one so u of i to the power of n plus 1 but you can see there are remaining how many unknowns so what are the unknown terms so u of i to the power of n plus 1 this is one next uh, u of i plus 1 to the power of n plus 1 so u of i to the power of n plus 1 so this is same so u of i minus 1 to the power of n plus 1 so basically so we have 1 2 3 four terms so out of four terms so basically you have only one known term which is u of i to the power of n so this is the known value but uh, here you can see these three are unknown values okay so let's compare let's write down the explicit scheme under this one so let's see the explicit scheme so what we have u of i to the power of n plus 1 minus u of i to the power of n divided by delta t minus alpha so u of i plus 1 to the power of n minus 2 u of i to the power of n plus u of i minus 1 to the power of n 
divided by delta x square equal to 0. So compare this is let's say expression 1 and this is expression 2. So if we compare expression like 1 and 2, so what we have? So basically uh, in the expression 1, so you have only what? So basically only one known value. So this is one known value we have. So here in the expression 2, we have only one unknown value. So the difference is, so in the implicit scheme, the number of unknown terms are more and in the explicit scheme, the number of unknown terms are less, which is only one. So the number of known terms are more. Okay. So explicit scheme is a straightforward scheme and easy to solve. Okay. We can solve the equation one by one. But uh, in the implicit scheme, so we need to write all the equations for different, different, uh, for different, different grid points collect together, form a matrix and invert it to get the values. Okay. So explicit scheme like equations, they can be solved step by step, but the implicit schemes. So we need to form a matrix and invert it. So here you can see, so what are the terms it is involving with the diagram? So you have I minus one to the power of N plus one. So these three, So these are the terms which are involved for a given expression. Okay. So if you want to increase the higher order accuracy or if you want to see the dependency of other terms, still we need to uh, include other uh, grid points. Okay. So this is for only one grid point at a particular grid point. So if you take, so we have four, let's say uh, four terms which are involved and in which three are unknowns. So if we, this is only one dimensional thing which we are talking. So if you increase it to 2D, 3D, so the number of unknowns will keep on still increasing and uh, the complexity level will increase. And uh, then the only way to solve these implicit schemes is write down the all equations, then uh, form in a matrix, all the terms which are present in the C equation uh, is written in the form of like uh, AX is equal to B. So basically x is nothing but a vector which is uh, which contains u of i plus 1, i, i minus 1 at different different time levels and a is nothing but uh, their coefficient matrix. So and b if you have any source term it will go this way. Okay. So we will actually do in this way and uh, invert the matrix and get the value of all the unknown uh, terms for the implicit scheme. But for the explicit scheme, so these uh, things are not applicable. So basically it's a straightforward. So each and every equation can be simultaneously solved. Okay. So let's see. So basically a term called semi implicit. So basically it's, we have a switching factor. So u of i plus one, sorry. u of i to the power of n plus 1 minus u of i to the power of n divided by delta t minus so this there is a factor called theta okay so which is alpha into So this is explicit oh, let us write this continuation here.
So you can see this is the general expression. So here if theta is equal to 0, so then what happens? So if theta is equal to 0, so the scheme whatever we are seeing it is fully implicit. So if theta is equal to half, then it is half implicit and half explicit. If theta is equal to 1, so therefore it is fully explicit. So basically the crack, uh, so here we have a semi implicit scheme and fully explicit scheme and fully implicit scheme. So this is the generic expression. So where we can write with a switching factor. So if we want to switch from explicit to implicit, implicit to explicit, uh, like we can use this uh, factor to switch on from one mode to other mode. And um, we will see in the future class uh, the, uh, regarding the stability. So is the explicit scheme is stable or the implicit scheme is stable? So which one is conditionally stable? Which one is unconditionally stable? So basically they tell implicit schemes are unconditionally stable and explicit schemes are conditionally stable, but some schemes are con unconditionally stable. So we will come to know like uh, which scheme, there are different types of numerical schemes in what and which are stable and which are unstable we will be seeing. But uh, here in today's class, uh, we had learned, so basically what is explicit scheme and what is implicit scheme. So explicit schemes, what does it have? Explicit schemes have only one unknown term and remaining all known terms and implicit schemes. So we have only one known term and all other unknown terms. Okay. So in the next uh, session, we'll be seeing. So what are the different uh, types of uh, uh, stability analysis? Like what are the different schemes which are available for the stability analysis? And uh, after seeing the stability, then we will see uh, the consistency, convergence and everything. So if the numerical scheme is stable, then we can use it for the simulation. So if it is not stable, then we cannot use it for simulation. So it is of no use. So therefore, the stability of a numerical scheme plays a major role in governing the fluid flow phenomena. So if the numerical scheme is not stable, what happens? So the values which we have calculated are associated with the errors. Okay, so we'll have more errors. Okay, so if we have the more errors, then uh, it is uh, it's it's based of using actually. Okay, so we'll be getting wrong values, and uh, whatever the things, what are the things we are getting? So those are of no use with the large computation cost. So before choosing a particular numerical scheme, it is important for us to see the stability, consistency, convergence. Okay, so basically uh, these three, these things have to be met. Okay, so in the next class, we'll be seeing uh, the stability analysis. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.